Welcome to day five. It is our last day of Teresa's <laughs> Christmas card making week of webisodes, but I really want to warn you, you want to sit back and relax because we have 24 projects to show you and lots of demos. <laughs> And we have brand new Christmas cutting dies and embossing folders to show you today. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Come, Come play, play with us. us. Well, here they are. Like we said, there's four new pieces, two cutting dies, two embossing folders. We have Fancy Joy and Wreath, three lacy Christmas ornaments. And we've got the Merry Christmas and the Christmas words. Now we're going to do them individually. So let's start with the Fancy Joy and Wreath. It comes with three cutting dies, as you see, and they are two and, a five, two and five eighths inch wide. That's which one? That's the Joy. The Joy, a two and a half inch wide wreath. And then you've got this great little bow that goes along with it. And because they're hot off the press, paper artists, you get a project. In fact, here is this there project. Is. <laughs> now, what I like about this that I wouldn't have thought of initially is as we mm -hmm. get closer, you can see two of the wreaths were die cut. And one was done on the pattern paper from this red velvet paper pack. The other was done on green suede. Right. And I just love the juxtaposition of those two right. pieces. They're set on top of each other, but they were turned just in a way that you could pop up a few of the little leaves and scrolls from underneath right. so that you can see them. And then the bow done out of cardstock and the joy done out of cardstock. So that's what that looks like with that beautiful cutting die. That word is just right. big and just beautiful. And let's see, on the inside, just doing the uh, Merry Christmas dazzles with the bow. So that bow is going to come in handy. Sure. Red velvet is the paper pack. This is a six by six. Which so, works great for Christmas colors, obviously. And you wouldn't, well, I wouldn't, I have, wouldn't thought. have thought of it. <laughs> you have to look at the colors of your paper pack and see where they go. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? Now, uh, today, we are uh, dipping into some of the personal shopper projects. So um, the cutting die personal shopper is a premier set and those ladies get them before, before anyone else. else does. When yeah. Lene made this card, she wanted a card that you could mass produce. Right. An so, yeah. Go ahead. I'm <laughs> sorry, an elegant looking card that would not be labor intensive. And right. look so what she did. Quickly put it together. This has got the silver linen specialty paper in the background right. and it's got white uh, it's white cardstock and black suede. I thought it was white suede because it just yeah. kind of helps it to look that way. But the black suede and and then the red ripple, so um, right, the you red can ripple see for these. The and the nice thing about this is, um, as Lene's intent was, is that you are doing a variety of things, and but it's just such a beautiful look. It is, and it's so simple. So you've cut out a couple of the the um, wreaths here. You've cut out the joy all with the cutting dies, very simple and quick. You mat these on a couple of pieces of uh, paper here. One strip there, a couple of strips of that, or the background actually being the silver linen. Right. You're done with the front. And this has um, added the red jewel dazzle and the red jewel border mm -hmm. dazzles. On the inside, those same uh, Merry Christmas greetings with right. just some of the bows. Plenty of room to write a message, but not too much where you have to take too right. much time. And it's a great idea just adding the bows along the bottom like a border. Just yeah. Around. Very just neat. Now, Susan decided to do a triple wreath, and that that's her take on this, but adding some of the embossing powder onto right. the die cut. So that is the zing, the gold zing right. emboss, glitter embossing powder. Right. So it, they were just covered and embossed with that just beautiful look. And the joy, and I think this is really an interesting color combination. It's the Christmas sweets paper mm -hmm. pack, but uh, in the browns and the really kind of muted green and right. gold. Even that large ribbon is from the Christmas sweets uh, ribbon set. Okay. I love that. It was just just a not just a, bit, a knot. A little couple mm -hmm. of V's at the end. And then on the inside, having uh, blessings there and the wreath. Oh, just and so that's pretty. from the gold tiny words and phrases dazzles. Very, very, very pretty. A little pretty. bit of gold stickles here on the on the uh, wreath as well. Just I beautiful. was kind of wondering what those yeah. were. Thank you for telling <laughs> us that. Now, this is a shutter card. Now, you know this week that the shutter cards you can get with the template right. or you can do them with the die cut cards. But look at this. Just a beautiful. Beautiful, and this so you can decorate each one of these pieces. I love how this first one, this label, which was done with 
the design toolkit was uh, matted. There's that one joy right on the front, but it's going over the opening right. of that shutter, so you know that it's kind not going to interfere with what's going on behind it. And you can see how the wreath really gets star treatment right. with those border dazzles. You know, one of the reasons we do that is to cover up what's to come if you don't want it seen right. yet. So it does a nice job of right. that, and then opening there you it. Go. And then this is from the Christmas cheer uh, paper pack, that sheet that has all the right. uh, words on it. So. so you get lots of messages on yeah. there. And this was done with the, I'm pretty sure it was done with the eight circles and scallops cutting guys as well. I would think well. so. There you go. So a nice way. Now look at this. Again, just so pretty having that shiny and glittery come in. Teresa did this and mm -hmm. has um, done something different with her uh, wreath. She did. She took that wreath and she used embossing powder and micro glitter on it. So I'm going to show you how that was done. She actually used two different colors. I think the base was a, a pattern paper, but I wanted to show you that there's two different there was one underneath it's a different color. I'm going to start with the one on top which she used kind of a light green um, cardstock and you take your Versamark and first, uh, actually I'm going to do this on white so that I don't make a mess later. <laughs> the Versamark part I'm going to just cover that wreath entirely. It got a little bent so I want to try to flatten it out first. Cover it with Versamark. Very easy to just stamp all over and make sure that it's completely covered. Then I'm going to cover that wreath with, I've got Zing Opaque um, um, Embossing Powder. This is the leaf color. It almost matches the color of that It does, cardstock. doesn't it? It's going to give something to hold on to, something for the glitter to hold on to, and I'll show you how that happens. Mm, okay. So I'm going to totally cover it, get that all over it or it's, I think I missed the edge. You but did. A little bit. It. That's okay. <laughs> It'll work. Anyway, so that's the embossing get that out of the way. powder. I'll get this back here and I'm going to go ahead and emboss that. I've got my heat gun and I'm going to hold this down. Sometimes I'll do it with my pen knife just because it kind of makes it easier. And here we go. So we'll just heat that pretty quickly and get it embossed. And after that, I'm going to add the glitter. So the first part of the process, let me make it so that you can see it. First part of the process is just getting it embossed. You know, you can see it that it's turned. And I get some of the micro glitter, which is right here. Which we're finding ever so many uses for our so way. many different ways. Now before I put that micro glitter on, I want to make sure that that's heated and kind of melty and then I'm going to sprinkle it on real quick. So, so while it's still hot? Right. Okay. So make sure that it's still kind of hot. Then I sprinkle it on really quickly. There's some in there, right? There we go. <laughs> and then that will adhere to the parts that are still nice and kind of toasty. And I oh, think so then, Teresa said she actually kind of pounced it pounced, into oh, okay. it. Yeah. So you don't need to reheat it again because the heat right. has melted. Okay. It has melted it just enough to where that glitter will stick Ooh. on there. And there you there go. go. Nice and sparkly. Kind of wiggly it. Yeah. And you can see the, the glitter. Beautiful. I'm not sure you can <laughs> I'm not sure you can see on camera, but in person it's nice and sparkly. Well let me go back to her card. <laughs> and so she has laid it um, on top of, as you said, one that was cut out of the pattern paper. And then she also did the same thing with the bow. And this is a double bow, so you can see that she did one underneath. And it just just adds a little dimension. She's used the um, uh, pearls. And uh, the white ones you can color with the Spectrum Nor pens, or you can get them in colors. And I love the tag going upside down. That's really fun. Yeah, that's how a she's great done look. That. And the this was toolkit. That, okay, I was just going to ask you. Yeah. Oh, which one is that? Let's see. It's hmm. in the gallery. Okay, it's in the gallery. <laughs> that's our fallback. Let's look in the gallery. <laughs> and then look inside where the red on red is just very striking. Again, she has heat embossed over the die cut. And in this case, used the Zing uh, red glitter embossing yeah, powder. Quite gorgeous. So very, very lush. A large 
pearls. Yeah. Do they come in red like that? Well, that's what I just said is that uh, oh, okay. you can right. get them in the in white and then you can color them. Okay. So scrapbookers, I forgot to tell you in the beginning that there would be scrapbook pages. So let me just be sure to show you this. And this is a beautiful scrapbook it page. It is. Of course, it's out of the new Christmas, Christmas cheer, cheer right. pack. We've got the it looks like the circles and scallops cutting dies were used with this. Yeah, you can use that. You can also use the Easy Circles template. Ah, just, mm -hmm. you know, we don't all have die cutting machines. So sure, that's uh, another way to go. Just in case. And then within each one of those, we have a nice wreath that was cut out of the pattern paper and then decorated with gold jewel dazzles. Of course, the star, other than that star, <laughs> is the joy. And isn't that just stunning? It is. So the circle has been cut and the wreath, and then letting the joy be cut out of the gold sparkles right. paper. And then individually, the joy, yeah. the letters were cut apart. So so normally this would be, say, joy all the way across. You just have to slice them apart, the individual letters. And you see the bow there. So the mm -hmm. wreath and the bow are kind of muted back as this color a color collection, paper collection is, mm -hmm. but then the joy just allows it to pop up. And because just, it is, it's a very joyous yeah. occasion, obviously. Beautiful way it's to frame that gorgeous. photo. Gorgeous. Now, one of the things that we're going to move into next, or the thing we're going to move into next, are the lacy ornaments. There are four cutting dies on this one. You have a one and a half inch, a two inch, and a two and a quarter inch wide ornament. And each of them have very fine detail, just beautiful, ornate detail, scroll work going around the edges of these. And plus you get this little holly leaf cluster. And these are uh, one and a half, did you yep, say that? I said oh, the dimensions. Thank you, because I was looking over here at the project. <laughs> Three lacy Christmas <laughs> ornaments plus a little holly piece. And I'll be showing you that project in a minute. But first, one of the things we wanted to do is let's make ornaments. Let's do that. So <laughs> this is just fun and even more fun out of the, in this case, the holographic paper, the fireworks, right. um, but also one was done, Debbie did these for us, out of the uh, Christmas Pattern paper right. from the Christmas cheer and then decorated with the uh, jewel dazzles. Right. So, so just beautiful. I've got some that I did. First, I'm going to show you that I cut out of silver linen. So in order okay. to make this ornament, you need to cut out four of these. Then you're going to turn it over and you're going to score it straight down the center. So you can use a scoring tool, a yep. stylus. I used the back of a pen knife just because I had that handy. It's fine detail. It's kind of, you want a, a very a small stylus to fit in those tight areas. So I went ahead and used, I placed a ruler there, scored along down the center. And then you're going to fold it right down the center. And I found, I found that I had to sort of do it just a little at a time because all of those small pieces have to be right. folded a little bit at a time. So you do that, and then you've got a folded piece. And each one of these pieces is going to make a quarter of that ornament. So I've got one here that I've already done. Then you want to glue them together. Got my glue stick, and I just start by putting glue on one half of it just like so. In fact, I'm glad you're doing that because it's often a question with a very involved uh, die cut right. like this one. How or, do you put the glue on right. it? Right, and this I is how you like do it. I don't like to go like that. If you go like this, <laughs> it all gets caught in every little piece. I mean, oh. you're still going to get a little bit of the glue going through, but mostly that's, that's the way I would do it. Then you want to match them up and just stick them together. So you're going to have half of the ornament right there. Gotcha. So just There's duplicate half. it for the other half. And I already did it for the other <laughs> half. And then you can glue one side and then stick it together. And then you will have a completed ornament. That doesn't really take much at right. all to make a beautiful little ornament that and you what's, can gift to someone. And what's nice is because these uh, cutting dies have that hanger at the top, all you do have to do is just loop some right. twine ribbon or something else in it. And I just love the shine. If you are doing gifts for a neighbor, teacher, hairdresser, a series of these is really a thoughtful oh, gift, yeah. and it's not going to break your budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> now, you can also do a similar technique on a card, as you can see here. Isn't that great? So the same idea, it was created in the same way using four pieces, but then 
folded up and, and part of the back piece was actually glued or left open and glued onto that yeah. card. And I'm thinking you actually could even do just a half of one sure. rather you than could a just, whole one. You could do that with just one like that, so there yeah. it would sit like that. Or you could use, in this case, all of them were used in that way, but you could also pull one apart and oh, use just, add just one more. three of them. Good idea. So kind of yeah. however, whatever suits your fancy. Yeah. Now, those would be neat in vellum, too. Oh, they'd be lovely, wouldn't they? Yeah. And this is one of the sheets of the Christmas cheer. Mm -hmm. So you've got that little bit of the black jewel dazzles and border. And then on the inside, another one of the greetings this from the great. paper pack. I love that the black and silver jewel dazzles were used here. So you get a mix of those. Very, very striking. It's beautiful. Now, another look and is... And we're still in the personal shoppers. So we still are, yeah. Shoppers. So just group. in case you ever want to get these before anybody <laughs> else, that might be an option for mm -hmm. you. Now this has been a die cut out of the metallic gold. It's not holographic, but it does give you that shine. Yeah, it's just a little bit more of a, a muted look. A little but more it, elegant, yeah. perhaps. And then once they were die cut, then they were backed with uh, swirls Part, um, vellum. Vellum. Right. <laughs> Swirls vellum. You can see the vellum there. Right. And so even those, are, those are about individually, those sheets. Right. Like swirl vellum. And then, so glued onto the back. And then they were foam taped. So you want to use foam tape in places that it's not so much going to be seen, like around the edges. But also the center was backed on green velvet. That's suede. right. That's right. <laughs> and I'm also like, as we back up just a bit, these to me look just absolutely elegant, but I like the torn edge with them. I think yeah. that's really a striking it just, look. It just adds a little bit. It, it sort of, it almost gives it dimension. It does. Mm -hmm. And I do like the uh, holly being cut out of the green suede and then backed and with that same gold. gold. And then the berries were added with uh, stickles. Right. And then on the inside, there's one more hanging from the top with Merry Christmas. And uh, speaking of doing our holographic, mm -hmm. here's one. That and was actually done twice because as you open this, it can spin around a little right. bit. Right, now in fact, what I would recommend is before you put this in the envelope, really, ah. really do this so that when the recipient opens this lovely work of art, it's going to do that. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> and you could, um, they decided to put blessings right up here. You could have a little message that would be hidden by the ornament. Sure. You could even cut out another one of the ornaments and place it right behind it so that it would be on the, on the inside as well. I like the spinning part, can you I tell? I do too. That's really <laughs> neat. So, so thread was used here. Mm -hmm, just some between, gold thread. Right, between the layers, a pattern paper was placed between the layers of two of these holographic cutouts and then the thread was anchored between the paper and the front of the right. card, then a design toolkit used was used to cut that out, to cut the window out of it. And kind of looking at what papers were selected, so Fresh Frost is a six by six paper pack, and the Blue Fireworks holographic paper was used. So mm -hmm. that combination really kind of bright and shiny with more of the muted, and that's what you get. And since those uh, cutting dies are done to be uh, equal sided, you can back them with themselves. That, right. you know, that just works beautifully. Now, scrapbookers, how about that for a scrapbook page? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> First of all, it's just a, a cute and very adorable little baby on there. That's always good. <laughs> oh, that's my baby. That is. And that's you too. <laughs> <laughs> that's Penelope, who is now two and a half and much larger than that. Um, but to have these, sorry, while I do that. <laughs> but having these out of the holographic, this is out of the silver sparkles. The silver sparkles, sparkles holographic. Right. So paper. there's the Just whole beautiful sheet. Beautiful touches, all of those ornaments. Look and look great. at that darling yeah. child. <laughs> <laughs> and again, with the pearls in the center. I absolutely love that these were hung on yeah. long strands of ribbon, so there's actual ribbon to, uh, placed at the top of each Especially one. Especially the sheer. I really right. like that. It's just beautiful. But Teresa also made one of these to show that you could also use the, the die cut bow and place that as well, that that would work. Now Teresa also used up here 
just a strip of the silver stars holographic mm -hmm. paper. There's the, the 12 by 12 sheet. So you can imagine how far that's going to go. And I'm loving that this is actually on the Mirage paper pack. <laughs> I know. So if you haven't noticed it, that's one of our newer paper packs, but it's it's fitting in just nice. Isn't that gorgeous? And she also used the circle template. The easy uh, template. circles template. Right. There are some banners that were cut down at an edge here and uh, on an angle. And then there's, so a, pretty. So there's a little uh, V cut in that one. And um, I love the joy with the ornament hanging. Hadn't hanging thought down about from that. the bottom of the Y. Oh, and that's so cute. As we get in here, you will see an embossing folder. Now, Ooh. we're going to really delve into that in just a minute, but um, giving you a little preview there. Right. One of our embossing folders. And one thing I will tell you, I did teach Penelope early on, as you can see, to how to separate the parts of an ornament and to I hang see. it. Comes in handy when she goes into your necklaces. I would like to tell you uh, the child can do those perfectly. But just a beautiful page and a good example of showing how something so small, these small ornaments, yeah. can be used on, to embellish a, a page easily. Beautifully. Now this is quite a beautiful and it looks so difficult and yet not so not, much. Not so much difficult. A little bit fun. It's fun to <laughs> get all these little pieces. So what happens is you start by cutting out several different ornaments, oh, the same ornament out of several different papers. So okay. in this case, there is a green cardstock, there is a gold metallic, there is a brown fireworks holographic wow. paper. And, That's a surprise. And a red suede. So I'm going to start with the red suede and I glued it down to cardstock and what you're going to do, they're sticking to my arms, <laughs> and I think I lost one. Oh my. What you're going to do is, go, there it is on the back. I put all of these on sticky notes so that I wouldn't lose the pieces. These are the pieces that were cut out from each of these. These are some of the ones. Oh. And different ones are used to lay them right back within the design there. So if you save these, and I kind of set them on here, you can glue them, and I'd put glue on them first, but I'm just going to show you, and they'll fit right back in within the design. So you can start adding these little pieces right back into the design, and you can do them with different colors. So there's the, the brown uh, fireworks holographic. We have the, the little gold pieces, and you want to find where they fit, and it's just like putting a puzzle back together, and they're all going to be glued on. You know. I'm saying that you could glue these on, but another idea would be to take these and, uh, oh, where's the green? Would be to put this on double-sided adhesive, ah. on that double-sided adhesive paper, and then these would just stick right in there, right. and you wouldn't that's have to glue idea. each individual piece. But as you can see, that's how they're, they're just inlaid. The design is inlaid right back into the original. And I think cutout. that's what I would call so this. This cut off, too, and oh, set right, right on, on top. top so that you've got that metallic looking. I think top. inlaid is just the perfect name for mm -hmm. this technique. It is just a really, really rich look. And it's a little deceiving because it's all flat. You, right. you know, with the cutting die, you normally have that evacuated space mm -hmm. because you filled it up. But it's just an elegant look. And this is a beautiful combination for us. So want to make sure that you see that. <laughs> now, Teresa has done some gilding with this card and quite beautiful. Oh, she went to town with gilding these. She and, did. <laughs> and these are, like we talked about, using Versamark over the entire ornament. And then you're going to sprinkle embossing powders on it. In this case, she used the gold encrusted, encrusted jewels, jewels kit, right. which has several different embossing powders and glitters and a glass glitter and all kind of wonderful things. So and then she beautiful. sprinkled it with the crystal micro glitter again. On top. On top huh. to just add an extra little effect. And then inside, now even with all of this glittery going on, she did choose to use that gold paper. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it just does a very nice job. And she's done some stamping. And embossing mm -hmm. with the uh, uh, Christmas greeting stamp set. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So quite, quite quite lovely. Now that she took in on the Gypsy Jewels paper pack too. And isn't that a surprise? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of little surprises. <laughs> and speaking of which, this is a very different look. And as you get in closer, thank you, John, you can see that this has a pearlescent quality. 
And Teresa did something, I think, pretty unusual with this. She did. She used this as a stencil. So out of any cardstock, you can, uh, you can cut out one of the ornaments and use it as a stencil. Now, Teresa said she used a uh, repositional uh, adhesive. Okay. There's a, something like a spray mount, which I didn't happen to bring, but I did bring a glue stick. So I'm just going to real quickly just put a little bit on there. And it's definitely going to work better with a repositional adhesive, but for our, um, for our purposes, we'll just do this. You go ahead and stick that down. And I should be able to pull that up later, but I do suggest using the other adhesive that we talked about because it makes everything sit down nice. And then she used eye zinc. We've talked about this recently. We've done a webisode on it, so if you want to look up the webisode or the product, it's a pigment eye zinc. It's a liquid pigment, and she used cactus, avocado, and citronella. And I'm going to use two of them for this ornament. So shake them up a little bit. You want to make sure all of the little pearlescence gets moved around in there. And I've got a craft sheet that I'm going to put a little bit. Actually, I can use an acrylic block. It would be a lot easier if you want to grab one of those. Yeah. They're easier to work with in this, these small quarters that we have at the moment. And you just put a little bit of each of those colors, a little puddle. I've got the green. And I've got the other green. So a darker green, a lighter green. Now, it's interesting because I... As I'm looking at this, it looks sprayed onto me, it but does. that's not what was done. It does. And then I've got the oh, mini. Oh, show this, because I don't okay. think we've talked about this. This is the mini ink blending tool. It's got a round uh, sponge applicator on there that it's removable with a little uh, hook and loop fastening on there. And you just get a little of that. And she said not to overdo it, so I'm going to sort of sponge some of it off and then just start going right through it to stencil and get it on the edge. You don't want to overdo it. Now, you do want it to go outside that die cut. So right. Just, right. Uh, you want to go outside. Don't try to keep it inside. You're going <laughs> to cut out around the edge of it right. so that you'll have a, um, you'll have a nice uh, matted piece. And then I'm going to remove that one and get a new one. Super simple. Get some of the other color here. The lighter green. Right. And then you're just sort of blending in, going on the other side, not too much. I'm testing it there. Okay. And you do the other side, and then oh, you blend them okay. in the center. I do like the colors. I Very pretty. I think that she maybe did a, a little bit more, even even some of the darker on the other side, too. But I'm going to, just to to show what it looks like once they're blended together. And then I'm going to see if I can lift that off, given that I used glue stick instead of what I was suggested. You there you go. There we go. Now what Teresa did then mm -hmm. was to cut it out, leaving a very narrow sixteenth of an right. inch border. And here we go. So uh, you can see that the white is really in sharp contrast to that eye zinc and giving that pearlized look. So very, very lovely. It is a beautiful look, and it's really shimmery, yeah. It shimmery is very pearl. shimmery, yes, mm -hmm. and plays well. There's the smaller one on the inside. You can see how the yellow has been brought in to play, especially on those on the inside more of the greens perhaps on the outside and then she's added some of the flower dazzles so that's a unexpected <laughs> addition unexpected. it's funny how you can cross <laughs> these, these dazzles <laughs> i think um the gypsy jewel kind of takes the cake doesn't yeah, it that was a pretty good one <laughs> now that all of those were just two cutting dies now that's we're right. going to get into two embossing folders our first one is this very striking merry christmas and just beautiful it's just a one big focal that right. you can very simply throw on the front of a card and, and how many different ways? And on the back oh, of it, as back. always, hot off the press, okay. there's going to be a sample. I think <laughs> I have that one to show you, but we'll find out. Yep, now, Teresa said that she just really never tires of simply putting it onto a metallic and um, just running it through and calling it good and just adding a little bit of decor it's around beautiful. it. It's beautiful. It's just not even having to add anything to that, just right. running it through, and you've got, you've got that 
that raised design that really speaks for itself. A little bit of ribbon here and one of those acrylic blossoms, just beautiful. Yes, a little resin blossoms. And on the inside, that's done with the uh, Lacy Labels cutting die, so, All right. and stamped. And, then, and, and stamps. The stamp set is from the, I'm not sure. I think it's Christmas cheer. Christmas cheer. Yeah, just beautiful. so just gorgeous. Now, if you want to do a little more, how about um, this option? And this is just simply running it through again, but this time out of a holographic. Out of the Red Ripple holographic. And then the top of it, it was just sanded. So I've got that piece here that's been done. You can, it's very hard to see on that ripple holographic. It it's is. funny how <laughs> on the foil, you were able to see it quite well. Yeah, it worked just fine. But the ripple mutes it. It, it does. It starts to take away from the design a, bit, a little bit. So I'm grabbing my sanding block and I'm just going across the top. And that is the magic of the holographic and papers. It doesn't take much. They have a silver core. They do. And there it is. Boy, that was exhausting. Oh, <laughs> and then simply cutting it out, matting it. This time, uh, the silver linen was used to cover the card, and you can see that those edges were also inked. So just a, a beautiful look. Very simply done in both cases, but very beautiful in both cases. It is. Now, okay. This is uh, one that Teresa has done, and this is a technique that uh, was taken out of her Stamp Camp number no. three, I believe, mm -hmm. DVD, and this is using aluminum foil. It is, just a regular <laughs> household aluminum foil. I've got a piece of cardstock here. She used brown cardstock, and I'm going to put it on here, with, and I'm going to get my foil here. I'm actually going to kind of try to flatten this out. If I had taken this right off the roll, it would <laughs> have been quite so um, wrinkly, but it still works like this. It right. still gives you a very nice effect. And I'm going to use this uh, embellishment glue stick. It's right. meant for things that are a little more hard to adhere. It's like, a super, super adhesive glue stick. Right. It's called embellishment glue stick. So I'm going to actually put it all over, all over this uh, cardstock, make sure that I'm covering it. That's kind of one of the important steps. Totally cover your cardstock, and you don't want to wait too long afterwards. You want to get that foil on that on there right away. And I'm going to put it shiny side up, stick that foil right on there, and then try to smooth that out as much as I can. And so I'm just using my fingers to smooth it out. Once I'm done with this, I can cut the edges off, though for right now I'm not worried about it. I want to get it into the embossing folder. I'm going to turn it around just so I can get it in there. Get it into the, there's that edge that sort of, I didn't cut off. It's all right. Putting it in the embossing folder. There you go. You don't even have to wait for it to dry or anything. I've got my Big Shot here. Excuse me while I grab it. And if you're not aware of the um, paper artist hot off the press embossing folders, they are silk screened on the front. So that's not something we've done. That's how they come. And it's just nice to be able to see what one this has. <laughs> right. And if you have it this side up, the silk screen part up, you know that the image that you're seeing there is going to be raised on this side oh, okay. of so your that's good. paper. So I'm putting that into the big shot of. For the big shot, I have to open this front cover for embossing folders. I've got my first cutting platform or embossing platform down, put the other one on top, and then I'm going to run it through. There we go. So let me just pull that out and this set this aside. I'm going to be using that again in a minute. <laughs> we'll go ahead and open this up. And there it is. Look at that. And even though you felt like you had a lot of wrinkles, it's looking pretty good. But we're not done. But we're not done. We're not done. Now, Teresa did an <laughs> antiquing on this, which and was a which nice was surprise. Really nice surprise. <laughs> and it's easy to do with antiqued bronze distress paint. I went ahead and shook it up. And what I found is that I had to be just a little bit careful going over this so that I wouldn't rip so I wouldn't rip oh. the foil. If, if I do this, I can do this out on the edges, but when I get out to the middle, I don't want to rip it. Maybe if I used heavy-duty foil, yeah. that wouldn't have happened. You this is just that. regular regular foil. So I want to try to get a good, a pretty good layer of that paint on there. 
So you're tapping it first and then kind of smooshing then, it around right, with that, that, that sponge was, top? Yeah, that way I don't have to push too hard to make the paint come out. It, it comes yeah. out and then I just move it around. So that ought to show you there. There's the paint pretty much all over it. Then I'm going to get a wet paper towel. So Now Teresa did, does say in her directions to let this dry. To dry a little but bit. But we're not we're doing not that. We're not of course. <laughs> Because we're on camera and right. we're live. <laughs> and so and if I waited for too long, it would be too dry the other way. So anyway, you can see the effect that this, right. you're going to try really just antiquing. to remove it. Yeah, you're antiquing. You're going to try just to remove it from the tops right. of those embossed areas. If you hit the back, that's all right. It just kind of moves it around a little bit. And every once in a while, I want to get a wet spot here on the on the. Um, paper towel, but there, you can see the... There you go. So you can move that around yeah. just as you want, and let me bring Teresa's mm -hmm. back again, and you can see that she does have that look of antiquing, which I think is lovely, and then she brought in some of the green, and this is with the um, Holly Dazzles, which Isn't is really good? kind of a surprise. It fits in there perfect, it even does. Though the tiny little, uh, the jewel dazzles that come with that three pack there you of go. the Holly Dazzles. And it's called perfectly. Holly Stickers. So you've got the jewel, you've got two shades of green. You can see she used the lighter one in this set, and that just works perfectly on the inside. Wow, isn't that pretty where she's done the copper? Um, on the brown cardstock and beautiful. added more of the holly. Very beautiful. And that's on the vintage Christmas paper. It is. Pack. How lovely. Now this is the sample that was done on the package and you can see that this was done um, just straight onto the ivory cardstock. The edges were torn. Right. And, oh you've got one there? I've got Great. one there. It's one of the more the simpler techniques that you can do with an embossing powder embossing folder and I've got a black jet black stays on and I'm just going to swipe it across the top because you want to see that image and if it goes behind it it will a little bit in in to some of the open areas then that's all right too it doesn't to me when I saw this after it was done mm -hmm. it looked like he, the background had been painted that's what you I thought was it? <laughs> it it sort of looked that way like oh there's just like this white chalky like a distress paint but it's just this way and then uh, Spectrum Noir was taken, probably the smaller end, <laughs> and colored in. And so just spend a little time coloring in and you can see how everything just sort of pops when you do that. Wow, very neat. Now I think you also could have done this piece out of red, mm -hmm. glued it on, and then hit it all with the, uh, that ink pad. Right. And then Which also... I think we're going to see a sample of that yeah, okay. coming up too. And then coloring it in also, adding some of the tiny jewel dazzles. Just a really striking look, very fun. Now, for another fun look, this is the exact same uh, embossing folder done on craft cardstock, although I think you could also do it kind of on a, a brown, a light brown. Sure. And cut out, you can see just going right around that edge, and adding some stickles, and this is oh, in stickles red. On top of that. Oh, yes. Okay, so take just a little bit of time and just go around. That doesn't take very much. Well, and you know what's beautiful. funny is that Lenace was a little hesitant about doing the stickles, but mm -hmm. she came back and told me it was really easy. It yeah. was just very simple to do. It looks harder than it is. Yes, and this case, this is a red piece that was done in ink. Cut out and set mm -hmm. on top. And here is one of our other embossing folders right, right on the back, which turned at an angle. Which happens to be a nice lead-in mm -hmm. to um, to that particular one and it is called Christmas Words and you can see that. And it's just a large word block of it lots is. of different Christmas words and what's wonderful about this is while you can use it all in one piece you can also cut it out individually. Which we'll show you <laughs> and on the back side there is a card that I'll be showing you in a minute. So here we have it in black as a background. You also saw it on that scrapbook page in mm -hmm. red. Right. Teresa has elected to do it in a, a pearl vellum. A pearl vellum. This is from that vellum sampler pack that we showed you and, and it's just beautiful. Let me show you this because that cover just truly doesn't do it justice. I call it a sampler pack but really this is a full pad of paper. Right. There's 40 <laughs> sheets and here is the pearl white. You get multiple sheets of each one. Then there is a 
a parchment look. I'm beautiful. sure that's like white on paper. It's white on beautiful. white. I'm sure that's I not the easiest that thing that to you see. You can see this, but this is each one of these is very different. There, that, this is a cloud, and then there is the regular vellum that we know and it's love. Totally, it's totally out of focus. We, there we go. There there's we go. a gold, <laughs> and then there's also more of the clear. The gold so, pearl is just beautiful. You really could is. see the pearlescence on that. In when fact, you're seeing that right. here on this card, you're seeing here on the edge. This is that white pearlescent. And isn't that just lovely? And talking about a card that is elegant and easy to do, it mm -hmm. is using these pull-apart berries from our friends at Petaloo and just some of the gold twine or gold thread. But isn't that lush? You can see how deeply they emboss. It is beautiful. Now here is the one that is on the back of the package. And it looks to me like you're gearing up for something over yeah, there. Yeah, I kind of like to show you how to do that one because it's a simple technique and it makes such an interesting look that I made and actually had to look up how to make it again after I, I'd forgotten how I did that. Share with us, lady. I will. You start with the embossing folder. Of course. A piece of paper that's a piece of cardstock that's going to fit in there just so. Are you using white cardstock? I'm using white okay. cardstock. I'm going to get the uh, um, I'm going to get the big shot ready to go so that I can just slide it right in there after I get this prepared. I'm starting with crushed olive distress ink and I'm going to put that on this side of the inside of the embossing folder. Now this is the side where the words are actually um, debossed into the right, folder. They're recessed. Right, so mm -hmm. you're basically wanting to get the background of, your, you're wanting this to end up on the background of your cardstock. So right. I'm just going to smoosh this all over and after I get it all over I'm going to sort of pat it because that just leaves a little bit more ink back there. Okay. Okay, quickly get my cardstock in there because I don't want it to dry very much. And I'm going to run that through the machine. I know you can't see the machine. But there we go. <laughs> You really are going to run it? Yeah, I am going to run it. It's only going to take a second. Okay, because when you pull that out, now you've got this piece. Ah. And then you take Barn Door Distress Ink and hit the top of it. Wow. And if you're careful, you can just hit the words. And I, I think that just, see. it's just a quick effect, and I just thought it was really. Really a neat thing to share. It is very neat. So let's go back and you can see how uh, with a little bit more than three minutes to <laughs> finish it, what that does. And you'll notice that Christmas is right in the center of that. Looks like you added some pearls, some strategically mm -hmm. located. I like I, creme pearls. Those are okay. one of my favorites. I like the um, ribbon in the center, but just hitting it with that ink pad, just as you did, just does such a good look. It does. And Even I'm, if it gets in the background, it doesn't seem to matter. It's a very uh, kind of a sketchy look, a little bit then archived. You <laughs> use the same ink pads to do mm -hmm. your stamping. So a couple little of strips of yeah. that uh, uh, suede and gold. Now here is a similar idea, but why I thought it was important to show this is that you don't have to have the whole card. Right. You can do, in this case, these are just the tags. They come like this. And um, then you just swipe it with the uh, inks, just as you did. Right. Notice how Noel, which is a section of the embossing folder, was done separately right. on red. On red. It was swiped again with those same inks, with those brown inks. and But the edged was done as well in a, a gold metallic stays on, it looks like. Just looks beautiful. beautiful. I love yeah. the little banners peeking out on the right. Isn't that nice? and then on the inside, the holly and jolly, which are next to each other. Right. another piece yeah. of the embossing folder. So you can think of it as a unit, or you can think of it as in pieces. If you think of it in pieces, <laughs> she says quickly. Think of it this way. Oh, think of it this way. <laughs> so the uh, total embossing folder was done in red and green, mm -hmm. and then the strips were cut mat matching up right. the they design. Were, they were laid back in order so that you still get the same messages right. going across but it is just a really ingenious look. I love the little banner treatment down at the bottom. 
and then one piece of that, the word straight out of the center, was cut out. That's just, and then ink, so very beautifully done on the inside. Cheer was done separately and then placed onto a strip to look like a banner. I think, uh, again, we're showing some of the, this one in particular was personal from shopper. the personal shoppers. Yes, it is. So they got those embossing folders first. And this is another of the personal shopper now. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was done on shimmer sheets, so that's a pretty big wow. They're, it is. They are so bright and colorful. And you're seeing a lot going on in that they were cut out, the words were cut out separately right. and then matted. They were also hit with stays on ink on the top of them. Top so of the you can see the joy mm -hmm. and the merry and the Christmas. Also, the snowflakes embossing folder was used for the background. Right. And um, some... Some ink, some uh, re-inkers re right. re for the Spectrum Noir was added, like little puddles and spritzed around. And you can go onto the gallery to see how that was done. I think that's a very fun, sparkly way to end our week okay. of webisodes. We want to thank Teresa for doing such a spectacular job. A fantastic project. <laughs> and mostly we want to thank you for joining us. And we hope you have a very Merry Christmas. See you next time.